lecture every day. College, jobs, you see lecture and learning new things. Maybe you want to take a first aid course, learn CPR. We deal with lecture every day of our lives. But it's kind of dry. It's unflavorful because it doesn't engage the students like active learning does. Active learning is the subject being into the subject deals with multiple stimuli and the students are allowed to engage in these different types of uh, learning. The, the learner is responsible for learning the subject. Excuse me. Um, everyone's different with learning. For me, I'm a visual learner, I'm a kinesthetic learner. I like to do things. Who here is a visual learner? Everyone. Who here is an auditorial learner? Great. And then a kinesthetic learner, doing things. Great. So everyone, there's a mixed breed of different types of learners here, which is great. Because both, you need both lecture and you need both active learning in order to be, make a well-rounded well -rounded student. So visual learning. You learn with your eyes. Your face is a camera taking pictures. Okay, you see the image in your head, or with your eyes, excuse me, and then that image is now, uh, is now enhanced in your brain, and that is stored into a file. If you look here, person on the left says table, or is trying to pronounce it. But on the right side, it's the, the girl saying table, and the image pops up in her head of what a table is. 
she is visually learning, or she has learned, of what a table is, and now that is projected in her head for when the word table pops up. Visual learners like diagrams, they like videos, uh, manuals, anything that they can see um, with their brain from their eyes. We have auditory learners, how they learn. They learn by, uh, if you can close your eyes, and if the image or if the, the um, whatever the subject is being portrayed, if you can understand that, then you can, then you can obviously an auditory learner. I'm sorry, you said you were an auditory learner? Yeah. What makes you an auditory learner? Um, when I'm like, doing tests and homework, I can, it's almost like I can hear what the teacher is saying about a certain topic. So that's how I study, is I like, just listen, I guess, to what they're saying, and then it plays back to me. Perfect. Yeah, if you see the picture right here, um, just two kids saying something, and it might, they just might be joking around. However, they're listening to what they're saying and they're responding back. They're, they're, being, they're learning through uh, your ears. Um, we see that auditory learners like discussions, they like to talk, they like lectures, which is good for a uh, college setting. I believe that all college students have to adapt to become an auditory learner. And, um, and then they become uh, a visual learner by writing it down later on with their notes. Uh, last, we have kinesthetic learning. You, uh, basic morals of a kinesthetic learner is you see it, you do it, you fail, you succeed. Okay, so you learn from your mistakes. Now, if we say, which one is better? Do we have lecture or active learning? Well, I'll give you a quick example. Riding a bike. Everyone's ridden a bike here, I assume. I hope so. It's part of learning or uh, growing up as a kid. But what makes you want to ride the bike? Okay, you, you see someone when you're younger, you see someone ride a bike, and you're like, oh my god, that is so cool. I want to be that person. I want to be cool. I want to learn how to ride the bike. So first, you visually look. How are they riding the bike? They're pedaling, they're maintaining balance, they're steering, and they're braking. Okay? I'm visually learning on how that person's riding the bike. Now I'm going to act. Well, how do you ride the bike? And now the instructor is going to teach me the basics of riding a bike. Next, I'm going to do the kinesthetic learning. I'm going to get on that bike and I'm going to try. So I get on the bike, I pedal 10 feet, I fall off. Okay. Now, I learn from my mistakes. Why did I fall? So I get back, I ride 20 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet. All of a sudden, I stop on my feet. And I didn't fall that time. I learned how to ride the bike. These Obviously, uh, active learning was involved, and it uses three different types of the major learning. Um, whereas, you know, lecture, you only use your visual learning, you only use auditory learning, which is two of the learning uh, lectures. Uh, I'm sorry, the learning abilities. Um, both, you can see that uh, active learning is a little bit better. You retain information a little more because it does require the kin kinesthetic learning, where you. Uh, do it and you learn from your mistakes. However, both have uh, positive and negative effects in which um, we will be described right now. So uh, active learning, active learning has tons of benefits. Um, that's why there's a lot, of, a lot of high schools and elementary schools are trying to involve active learning more in common classes like English, math, and history. But one of the reasons why it's so so uh, why well, it works so well with students is because it's more natural. Learning by doing is a lot more natural to us than learning by listening, and then trying to pretty much copy what you're, what you're hearing. Um, when we grew up riding, when we learned how to ride a bike, like you said, when we learned how to mow the lawn, or maybe even do our own laundry, we learned by our parents showing us um, how to do it, like how to, parents showing us like what to do on the lawnmower, what, to, what buttons to press on the washing machine. They didn't, they didn't like write out like instructions or like lecture us for 10 minutes on how to do it. It's also, because it's so natural, it's a lot, it's a lot easier for us to comprehend. Um, in a hands-on class, you're not, nobody's in the back falling asleep, nobody's in the class texting, nobody's, nobody's drawing on their notes. They're all, they're all active in the learning environment. So they're all doing, they're all doing the work as the teachers are doing the work with them. And because of this, 
students can retain three percent more, I mean, three times more information when it's in an active learning environment versus a lecture. For example, in high school, I took a, my freshman year of high school, I took a mechanic shop class to learn how to work on cars. And I thought I was gonna be working on cars, but instead I was actually reading out a book every day and doing chapter work and quizzes. And I pretty much, I didn't learn much from that. I pretty much said, oh, how to change the oil, went through my head, wrote it down in the quiz and forgot about it. And I pretty much left that class not knowing anything. In my junior year, I switched over to Nevada Union High School, went to this shop class where we actually had a mechanic shop. Uh, teachers would bring in donated cars, they'd bring in whatever cars, and you'd actually do it yourself, and you'd actually do the work instead of being told how to do it, and it's just a lot more effective when you're actually using it. Hands-on learning also can teach critical thinking skills, uh, which is pretty much just like thinking on the flyer, problem solving. Like there's a saying that says, uh, give a man a fish, he'll eat for the night, give a man a fishing pole and teach him how to fish, and he'll eat forever. It's the same thing with, same thing with learning in class. Uh, you get taught, you just, if you're in a class, all you do is write down, like copy down facts or copy down definitions, and you take the quiz. You no, know, that's all you know. But if you're in a class where you're learning how to solve problems by like, by doing actually hands-on style things, then you'll learn how to do that, and you could use those to help you later on in life. And although there's a lot of positives to hands-on learning, there's also a lot of bad things to it. And All right, Jacob talked about the positives about active learning. I want to talk about the negatives of active learning. Negatives, negatives. How you guys doing? Great. All right, all right, all right, all right. So there's negatives in active learning. I like to learn in the active learning. That's the way that I like. I like doing stuff. I like putting my hands on. I like getting. I like to touch the stuff. And I, that's how I get it done. If you talk to me about theory, I'm going to fall asleep. If you lecture me, I'm going to fall asleep. You need to have action. You got to move around. That's the way things get done. But the, the, there's negatives to it. There's problems with it. Number one, the negative thing: if you're going to teach something, you better be an expert of what you're teaching. So, Caesar, what the hell are you talking about? Expert at what? How how, how am I going to learn? You know what? The research says that in four hours, the information that you're being taught in a lecture, you're going to forget about. You're only going to retain about 5% of that information. So I want you to retain 70%, 90%. How am I going to do that? I'm going to get you to teach me how to do it. Because when you learn this stuff and you can teach it to her, then you apply the information and now she can, she can learn it and now you learned it. Now you're retaining the information. But I gotta know how to do that. So how am I gonna do that? You're asking me, Caesar, how are you gonna do that? Right now. Right now we're gonna have two doctors in this room. Dr. Oz and Dr. Yavis. <laughs> right. I need three interns. Intern. Intern, come over here. Please stand right here. All right. Another intern. You be an intern? All right. Stand right here, another intern. Any volunteers? Here's another. I see it, I see that drive. Come on, join us. Join us, join us up here. All right. These answers are gonna be doctors now, okay? Doctor. 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 Brian. You guys gotta believe it, all right? You guys gotta believe it, all right? All right. You're doctors in dentistry. You all are gonna be dentists today. We need a patient. A patient? All right, come on. Sit down here with the patient. All right, guys, I need you to show me. I need you guys to show me how you're going to extract a tooth out of her. All right, all right, let's get to work. How do we do it? How do we do it? Give me a hammer and some wires. Doctor, come on, doctor, let's go. Get in there. Get it. You don't know how to do it? <laughs> you better be an expert before you teach. That's the point that I was trying to get. Thank you for your help, guys. So you need to be an expert before.
form. That's the number one. Number two, second thing, it takes time and energy to do it. It's not an easy thing. When you look at faculty, Dr. Oz or myself, we want to sit here and just give a, a lecture, say, hey, this is the information I'm presenting to you. I'm tired of that class. I want to go on my day off. You know, I want to get to my next class. I don't want to put time and energy. Learn that material, I'll give it to you, learn it, I'll test you on it, and I'm off. We want to, you have to put in work. A lot of faculty doesn't want to put in work. They're overworked, they're underpaid. Right, Dr. Oz? No. Oh, no. no, no, no. <laughs> Excuse me, okay. It's another negative. There's another negative is, <coughs> other negative, it stresses people out. It stresses you out if you put, you gotta learn something new. If we work in a place where we've done something for the, the same way for about 20 years, and they bring something new, and they say, how are you gonna do this? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna learn this information? But I've been doing it for 20 years the same way. Caesar, why do you wanna change it? You need to learn it. Windows 7. We were working at uh, 2004 XP. Every every nine months to something new. All these young kids coming out of college with all these old guys working in the factory, working there for 20 years. Hey man, we did it for 20 years. Shut up! I don't talk about your education. Now, this is how we always do it. Man, you're old. You don't know what you're doing. I'm going to show you new new this new program is going to make you better. Efficient, more productive. Oh, shut up, young buck. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Stresses you out. People don't like to be stressed. So those are the negatives of, about active learning. We're going to lecture. going 
going to what um, Tyler was talking about in the way that we learn. If you're not an auditory learner, lecture is not going to be great for you. Um, if you're uh, visual or kinesthetic, you definitely are going to need the active learning aspect. So. But despite there being so many negative things about lecture and the negative stereotypes, such as you know, whatever you think of lecture, you think of that scene from Ferris Bueller where it's that really, really important was like Bueller, Bueller, and then he drones on about the Great Depression. And it's just the most boring thing you've ever seen. You're practically falling asleep watching the movie. But in reality, there are actually a lot of good things about lecture. For one, it's very, very, very simple for the teacher to explain it. It's actually, there's no explanation needed. For example, active learning, you probably have to explain the activity to the students before you start. Like you're going to have to say, oh, okay, so class, this is what we're doing today. We're going to do this, this, and that. Lecture says, well, today, class, we're going to be talking about this, this, and that. Here we go. It's just very simple. You, the teacher will give out the information, and then the students just have to learn it and write it down. It's very simple, very straightforward. No need for explanation. You're actually going to lecture right now. Uh, another, another good thing about it is that it actually works a lot better in the business world. For example, uh, right now, we're doing a presentation on active learning and uh, lecture, and lecture actually looks a lot more professional. For example, you know, you're not going to be doing like an activity with your managers and you know, at a meeting, you're just like, okay guys, let's count the jelly beans now, it's not going to work. It looks a little silly, in active learning. Like you have to have, for active learning, it's a lot harder to come up with it, to come up with an activity, and then you also got to, you got to also have one that would be appropriate for a business meeting, for a business presentation. But lecture, it's very simple, very straightforward, and easy to fall back on. Third thing is, is just that. It's because it's so simple, it takes literally little to no time to prepare a lecture. You just have to have what you want to talk about written down somewhere. You can just read off of, off of your notes if you want it, just because uh, it's so simple, so easy to set up. So that way, uh, teachers aren't too hard pressed when it comes to trying to set up a, lect a lesson for the day. So, personally, uh, lecture is just all a lot simpler, a lot more straightforward. That's why it's been in teaching for such a long time, because it's probably one of the more straightforward methods of teaching in general. However, we're actually going to go into a quick little activity and let you guys decide on which one you think is better. We're actually going to try and teach you a very simple task: how to fold a shirt in under two seconds. First, I'm going to lecture and tell you guys how to do it. Although it's just going to be a lecture, I'm just going to be telling you how to do, just telling you the instructions. So what you're going to do is you're going to want to unfold your shirt, have it flat out like this on the table. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to grab on the top left collar, going to grab the shoulder there, going to pinch it. And you're going to grab the, you're going to go down to the middle of the shirt, you're going to pinch it there as well, so that way you're facing it like this. And then you're going to cross, you're going to take the arm that's holding the top of the shirt. Cross it under the arm that's holding the bottom, that's holding the middle. You're going to grab the bottom of the shirt, and you're going to uncross it, and then you're going to fold, you're going to put down, you're going to fold the arms under, under the shirt. Do you guys get any of that at all? Exactly. So I'm going to show you how to do it. So this is the active learning style. So see what I'm doing? See what I'm doing? I'm going to take my right hand, I'm going to grab this on the top, okay? And then I'm going to go from my hand down to about the middle of the shirt, pitch it there. Then I'm going to take this hand, go underneath, grab the bottom of the shirt, and then I'm going to uncross it like that, and then I'm going to fold the arm in. And there you have your folded shirt. So, kind of see how it's done. Kind of see, you kind of get it now, how it's a little bit more uh, just in general. So, for I guess in general, active learning it can be applied to a lot of things. Although it may be a little bit more effort. For example, in having to go through the whole process of showing it to you guys and all that. It's a little bit more effort. Or actually maybe a lot more effort depending on what kind of subject that you're teaching. But it is a lot, in general, it's a lot better for those things like for um, like for hands-on stuff or just math, like going through processes, or maybe science when you're demonstrating, like especially in science, like when you do all the cool physics activities in labs. That's all hands-on learning. That's all active learning. And, I mean, yeah, for more abstract things like history and English lecture, maybe. and maybe a little more professional. But 
it's just depending on what your style of learning is and how you want to go about teaching it to the class or to your maybe even your management team or your coworkers, et cetera, and so on. So that is, I think that just about wraps up our presentation. Thank you so much for your time.